Hi everyone, today is April 11th, 2024, and today my guests and I are going to go over Matthew chapter 13. And like usual, before we do, we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to come in the room and join us and to please to help us all understand the word that we're going to read today and if there's anything that you know we personally need to work on or we're being confirmed you know with something that we might have been praying about or we need some discernment um you know we ask the holy spirit to come in and convict confirm or give us discernment with God's word today and to help us to understand what God's trying to say to us and for it to get down in our hearts. We're also going to ask for the Holy Spirit to, um, I want the Holy Spirit to help anyone that's having doubts, um, in their mind and maybe their minds are racing and they're thinking about other things while they're listening to this video, please help them to, you know, open their minds when they listen in case that they've had traditions or things that they've grown up knowing and it's, it's hard for them to listen to a different perspective because we've all had that. So please open up their hearts and minds. Also, I'm asking if, um, Father God, in the name of Jesus, will you please, um, you know, in our will right now, we want loosed from our souls any anger, depression, hurt, pain, offense, any doubt, any unbelief, worry, fear, denial, and anything else that doesn't come from you to be gone in Jesus' name. And also, we're going to ask to plead the blood of Jesus over the tops of our head, down to the soles of our feet. In Jesus' name we pray. Okay, so we are going to try to get through two different chapters today, so I'll be doing another one, um, so it'll be the same date. So let me just start off here, and then we'll go over it. So chapter 13, verse 1. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and was sitting beside the Sea of Galilee. But such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, positioning himself as a teacher, while the whole crowd stood on the shore. He told them many things in parables, saying, Listen carefully. A sower went out to sow, and he and as he sowed, some seed fell beside the road, and the birds came and ate it. Other seed fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and at once they sprang up because they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and thorns came up and choked them out. Other seed fell on good soil and yielded grain, some a hundred times as much, sixty times as much, and some thirty. He who he has ears, let them hear and heed my words. Verse 10. Then the di disciples came to him and asked, Why do you speak to the crowds in parables? Jesus replied to them, to you it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has had not been granted. For whoever has spiritual wisdom because he is receptive to God's word, to him more will be given, and he will be richly and abundantly supplied. But whoever does not have spiritual wisdom because he has devalued God's word, even what he will wait even what he has will be taken away from him this is the reason i speak to the crowds in parables because while having the power of or seeing they do not see and while having the power of hearing they do not hear nor do they understand and grasp spiritual things 
in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfill, being fulfilled, which says, You will hear and keep on hearing, but never understand. And you will look and keep on looking, but never comprehend. For this nation's heart has grown hard, and with their ears they hardly hear. And they have tightly closed their eyes, otherwise they would see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn to me, and I would heal them spiritually. Verse 16. But blessed spiritually aware and favored by God are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, many prophets and righteous men who were honorable and in right standing with God long to see what you see and do not see it and to hear what you hear and do not hear it. Verse 18. Listen then to the meaning of the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom regarding salvation and does not understand and grasp it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the one on whom seed was sown beside the road. The one on whom seed was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and at once becomes welcomes it with joy, yet he has no sustenance, root inside him, but is only temporary. And when pressure and persecution come because of the word, immediately he stumbles and falls away, abandoning the one who is the source of salvation. And the one on whom seed was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the worries and distraction of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it yields no fruit. And the one on whom seed was sown on the good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands and grasps it. He indeed bears fruit and yields, some a hundred times, some sixty and some thirty. Verse 24. Jesus gave them another parable to consider, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in the field. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds, resembling wheat, among with the wheat, and went away. So when the plant sprouted and formed grain, the, wheat, the weeds appeared also. The servants of the owner came to, came to him and said, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? Then how does it have weeds in it? He replied to them, An enemy has done this. The servants asked him, Then do you want us to go and pull them out? But he said, No, because as you pull out the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let them grow together until the harvest, and at that time I will tell the reapers, First gather the weeds and tie them into bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. 31. He gave them another parable to consider. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, and of all the seeds, planted it in the region, it is the smallest. But when it grew, it's the largest and of the garden herbs, and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air find shelter in its branches. Verse 33. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and worked into three measures of flour until it was all leavened. All these things Jesus said to the crowds in parables, and he said nothing to them without using a parable. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables, I will utter things unknown and unattainable that have been hidden for mankind since the foundation of the world. 36. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples came to him, saying, Explain clearly to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, 
The one who sows the good seed is the son of man, and the field is the world. And as for the good seed, these are the sons of the kingdom, and the weeds are the sons of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil, and the harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. So just as the weeds are gathered up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and all who practice evil, and will throw them into the furnace of fire. In that place there will be weeping and grinding of teeth, over distress and anger, then the righteous, those who seek the will of God, will shine forth, radiating the new life, like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear and heed my words. Verse 44. The kingdom of heaven is like a very precious treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid again. Then in his joy he goes and sells all of all that he has and buys that field, securing the treasure for himself. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, and upon finding a single pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. 47. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet, which was lowered into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. And when it was full, they dragged it up on the beach and they sat down and sorted out the good fish into baskets, but the worthless ones they threw away. So what will be at the end of the age? The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw the wicked into the furnace of fire. In that place, there will be weeping over sorrow and pain and grinding of teeth over distress and anger. Have you understood all these things in the lessons of the parables? They said to Jesus, yes. He said to them, therefore, every scribe who has become a disciple of the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household, which brings out of his treasure things that are new and fresh, and things that are old and familiar. 53. When Jesus had finished these parables, he left there. And after coming to Nazareth, his hometown, he began teaching them in their synagogues. And they were astonished and said, Where did this man get the, this wisdom and these miraculous powers? What is the source of his authority? Is not this this carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And are not his brothers James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And his sisters, are they not living here among us? Where then did the, this man get all this wisdom and power? And they took offense of him, refusing to believe in him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and in his own household. And he did not do many miracles there in Nazareth because of their unbelief. Mm. Man, this one was good. Yes. Holy moly. All right, let's see here. Sheesh. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Well, you, me and you had already mentioned something about parables and yeah. how, you know, we we kind of brought this up before like i think me and you have had a discussion ourselves about you know understanding like sometimes you get like um a different explanation yeah. like given to you of something that you know i also am trying to figure out and from and i feel like some of your scenarios are kind of like parables but in like modern day right. and they help me to understand like I've noticed, you know, through these videos so far, sometimes we'll be talking about stuff in here and you'll come out with stuff that actually helps me understand it better. Yeah. And I get a better, uh, 
it helps me be able to then communicate what I want to to God later yeah. when I'm like thinking about these videos later because I'll be meditating on something that we had said or whatever. And I have read these parables. Yeah. And oddly enough, I actually understood a lot of them this time. Yeah. Without, like, I feel like there's been like a download somehow yeah. into my subconscious because I've read these, like I said. And, or maybe it's kind of funny because I think I've heard people say that. You can read the same scripture over and over. It just depends on, like, when you're ready yeah. to understand it. Or, like, maybe your mind wasn't opened enough at that time, and now it's, like, more open and stuff, you know? What do you think of these? I think they're so good. <laughs> I mean, it definitely, Jesus already explains it, where he's pretty much, you know, um, one of them is, you know, mm -hmm. they're going to hear the word, and there does not understand and grasp it. The evil one comes and snatches away. I forget exactly. Like, pretty much... Um, oh, because he does explain what it means down here. Yeah. And, um, like, one of them is, you know, they hear the word and they like the word, mm -hmm. but they go out into the world and they forget about the word. Um, uh, the other one is where they hear the word um right they oh right don't... here so it's right here so the where he's saying they hear the word right and yeah. they're happy about it but but the evil one so like the devil comes yeah. quickly and snatches it away out of their heart yeah so it wasn't like um the word didn't get deep into their heart yeah that's it how it i didn't get rooted in there. yeah yeah it's that's like, how, oh, yeah it's you pulling out a flower exactly before. yeah yeah um and then the other one was the one about the rocky road and he's saying that those people like you said are are happy to hear it yeah but when they go out into the world yeah they are tempted by other people yeah. and or stuff the like other that. one i think is like you're getting prosecuted and they yep. fall short yep um yeah, yeah well, anything that makes you stumble and yeah, fall away. Yeah, this that is kind of how I felt when I was at that last job. Yeah. Where, um, you know, God had already presented all this stuff to me. Mm. And then I pretty much went and was like gossiping and, you know, doing all these bad things. And uh, just thinking like, dang, I just, like God just helped me out. Mm. And, you know, now it's kind of like that. Once I went out into the world... I fell short. I didn't keep up my end, mm -hmm. and um, I got swallowed by the worldly things that affect you. Yeah. If you're not strong-willed, mm -hmm. um, with God. And yeah. Then, so uh, like deep rooted. Yeah. With the whole salvation thing, because yeah, I think that that makes sense to me what you said because I was just thinking, well, you didn't even have the word. Mm -hmm. That's why. Yeah. And so now. That you're getting the word, you're getting more of the deep rooted like foundation yeah. to where you're not gonna stumble. People aren't gonna, because this also reminds me of like people that'll say stuff like, I don't go to church anymore because somebody in the church like offended me, mm -hmm. and or I didn't like what the preacher said that day, and you know, it hurt my feelings, so like I'm not going back. And I would think to myself, well, that has none of that has nothing to do with God. Right. Though, it, that's people that, I mean, geez, I've accidentally hurt people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I don't mean it. And so I don't think that people are meaning to hurt other people. Like, I don't think there's an abundance of people out there that are trying to hurt one another. I do think there are some people out there that are like that, but I don't think it's the majority right. out there, even though I do feel like the evilness in the world wants us to believe that they're more evil right. than there are good. And I think that's a mind game, like a yeah. mind, you know, 
uh, game on it. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to say no, over, no, no, but no. it just reminded me of that part. Yeah. So then what's it say? The next one is the guy who hears the words and the distractions of the world. So the, yeah. the pleasures yeah. of today, of riches and getting things. Man, I see a lot of that yeah. too. I would say any pleasures, anything that's um, yeah. where they're saying, you know, um, when you're addicted, yeah. you actually are under the control of that addiction. Yeah. And the things that we choose that are pleasurable to mm-hmm. us, um, you are know, we, we're, we're liking it more than God. Yeah. So it's these are, this is why God says, do not mm-hmm. worship these things. We are a creature of worship. Mm-hmm. Like we're, we were created to worship God yeah. and not in a, um, like a forceful way. This right. is why we got that choice from, you know, when Adam and Eve, he wanted us not to be robots. Mm-hmm. And so we gave Adam and Eve the choice to pretty much say, hey, you can follow me and always be with me and all that or, you know, and don't eat this thing. And then when they chose to eat that, it was a way of saying they wanted to do things without God. Their way. Their way. Um, I think we all, I think we've all done that. Yeah, I think that's the curse that we're all under is we, and then the parents teach it. Mm -hmm. um, Because they're under the same curse. Yeah, like we have our own destiny, we Mm -hmm. make our own destiny, and um, as long as you love yourself, who cares, and you know, blah, 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 blah. Like all these things are teaching us to, oh, we got it, I don't need God, I got it. I can do this, um, and people don't even think about God. They just think, "All right, I'm the one. I'm the one doing all this stuff. I'm the one. There's nothing else happening to me." Yeah. Um, but Man, yeah, I've and heard then that. and yeah. then there's the one who hears it mm-hmm. and it and actually grasp. yeah grasps it mm-hmm. and um, produces fruit, which is they they follow it. Mm-hmm. They. Um, um, yeah, they're getting into the word. They're they're getting the sword of the spirit yeah we're getting the word you know what i mean like we're we're understanding and i think and i correct me if i'm wrong but i kind of feel like it means more of like the desire in my heart has changed dramatically like i used to desire you know food like you know and soda and gossiping and drama and just like all this other stuff and there was a point in time where now I definitely know that the word is true because I'm I can see daily that the desires in my heart are now like changing because I changed my, I started to desire getting to know God more and more and more. Mm-hmm. Like I kept talking to him more and more each day because I started to be like, hey, wait a minute. He's kind of answering me. You know, at first I thought I was nuts mm-hmm. because I was like, uh, kind of feel like. Like how can I explain this? Yeah, to like yeah. I kind of feel like. God just answered me, but I don't want to say it to anybody because I felt like people were going to be like, okay, she's losing it. Mm -hmm. And I think the excitement of me being like, hey, wait a minute. I kind of feel like I'm getting talked to and not really like hearing it, but like things would happen. Mm -hmm. You know, I would hear like you'd say something to me or... You know, my husband would say something to me or something would happen at work or it just, it started to become more and more and more. And I'd start to watch um, YouTube more and more. And I started to, um, because I was reading more of the Bible and trying to figure out like, who am I? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, cause when I realized that I had been getting lied to, I, which was, to be perfectly honest, I don't think I ever would have believed that yeah. ever if it wasn't for God. Yeah. God knew. God has to be watching us all. Because if he's not, how would he know when I'm ready 
to hear something that I probably might have been hearing like nonchalantly in the past but wasn't even paying attention to it because my mind was always like there was always chatter going on in my head like I was either thinking about the bills I was thinking about how much money I was going to need to make this week to pay the bills I was thinking about you know the, the kids and like just I was constantly thinking about stuff and feeling like everything was on my shoulders all all of the world was on my shoulders and I was getting more and more like I felt like I was getting more and more compressed yeah. you know how you had told me once about the whole backpack thing and the yeah. rocks in your backpack and like if you just going on a hike and if you have all these backpacks I mean backpacks if you have all these rocks in your backpack and you're going hiking like hello it's going to be super heavy, but if you keep like taking one out, you know, at a time, it gets easier and easier to get up the hill. It felt like I was being crushed, you know, from like all the stress and the worry and the anxiety and the money issues and like always thinking that I wasn't good enough and like thinking of like all the stuff my mom told me and dollar shit you know other people said and you know how just like all the abuse just like constantly thinking about saying it was god that like started to kind of like how jesus talks about what i love about this one is it sounds like he's talking about like a gardener okay a gardener who's gonna go and you know he's going to plant a garden and he's, and he want, he, he doesn't know when it's going to start sprouting, but he has faith that if he puts the seed in the ground and he waters it and he takes care of it, it's going to grow and it's going to give him stuff. I, it's like, um, at, because I didn't really understand the whole Jesus connection at the beginning when we were, when I started studying yeah. the Bible with the Jehovah Witnesses, I actually thought everything was God, 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 right? And I was like, okay, so God's like removing like these things from from my head. But really, now that I understand Jesus's role mm -hmm. in the in the triune God, yeah. like it makes sense to me why we're following Him mm -hmm. and not God. How can we follow God? We never got to see God. That's why God brought Jesus here. So yeah. we actually could see God. We have access to the Father through the Son. Exactly. And so now you get to like, I feel like the Holy Spirit was like removing the rocks that I didn't realize I had in the backpack. But I was so stubborn thinking that I was the one that had to like fix everything or or make everyone happy or try not to hurt anyone's feelings and stuff. I felt like I was putting the pressure on myself. Mm -hmm. It's so wonderful when you realize God doesn't want us to have any pressure. Yeah. Like he doesn't want us to feel like we're under pressure. He doesn't want us to feel fearful or anxious or worried or any of that. He just wants to be a loving father that all of his kids want to see him. It's you know? funny because it makes me think of people who are like, oh, it's messed up because, you know, I want free will. And, you know, um, they think God is just some, uh, like, boss and something like that but it's like we you know adam and eve they chose the role you want and look at what's happening to us mm. the longer we're in it you know people's lifespan is going down you know um people are believing the world they're believing all these things they think they have all these problems these issues um, people out there thinking they're a different gender. Um, mm -hmm. There's all these things, and they're just pumping it, pumping it through the media. 
Um, and this whole entire world has became sick, you know, because it's like, where, yeah, yeah, look at what happened. We chose to do this ourselves and look what we did. Yeah. We have wars after wars. We have all these issues, um, that we could be fixing. We always want to blame God, but it's like, Hey, it's us that is going along. We're complying with this mm. and we're allowing it to happen. If we all just stood our ground with, God, so with Jesus's sense. authority to let people know, like, you're not doing this because yeah. we, we think of Jesus as, um, just some, you know, not just some guy. I don't, you know, forgive me for Lord. Um, but, you know, Jesus wasn't always just like as this happy go loving guy. He oh, was yeah. angry at things. He flipped tables when it came to them selling um, God's goods, which was his animals. And he was saying, don't make my father's home into a marketplace. I think I'm paraphrasing. No, but, but uh, he does. He's talking about because they were doing that in the temple. Yeah. So he, he we have to understand we can get mad at the things that Jesus would be mad at, and we can tell them, like, you're not doing that, mm-hmm. you know. The... I say, like, do you think that that's our chance to not bow down? See, I think that's what it is. Mm-hmm. When I said no to the vaccine, mm-hmm. everybody made me feel like crap because, and I don't know why, because mm-hmm. I didn't wasn't telling anybody that they couldn't take it. Yeah. I didn't understand why they were mad at me because I didn't want to take it. Mm-hmm. It's my choice. You, everybody, you know, I stood my ground because of my beliefs, Mm -hmm. because I understand what's in it, because I work in the medical field and I know how God feels about it. You know, I know how he feels about it because I've talked to him personally in my own time to get that confirmation for myself. Like everyone... I'm not, I don't care if you took it or not. I don't, it, I don't think that it's bad if you did take it. Well, because I think a lot of people got pressured into it. I, I think yeah. a lot more people wouldn't have taken it if they, you know, didn't blow everything out of proportion. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, do you think that it was a way to see if we'd bow down to something else? I think else? there's lots of things. Um, it's not just that. I think that's one of them because yeah. it's. You should always choose God. Yeah. And there is nothing in this world that scares me. Mm-hmm. In a weird way, God scares me. I fear God because God, and like God said, you don't fear somebody who can only kill the body. You fear the one who can destroy the body and soul in hell. Um, yeah, nobody so, on earth can do that Yeah, to us. so there's no nothing on earth, there's nobody on earth that puts fear in me. Yeah. Besides our Elohim, in yeah. you know, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, um, we are supposed. He says we're supposed to reverently fear the Lord. Yeah, and that's it's not fear like we're Lord actually is... scared. It's just no, we understand. It's wisdom that God has these powers. Yeah, and it's like I don't those power. It's almost like if an ant knew I had a magnifying glass. He'd be like, oh, okay. And it, he knew I could talk. He could talk to me. He would be trying to make sure, like, hey, I don't want to get roasted over here. Um, Just let me be. <laughs> yeah. Me um, be. But either way, I'm not trying to say God is a guy in a magnifying glass and, you know, stuff like that. No, I'm just trying no. to find a way yeah. real quick. But either way, um, this world has all these uh, fake things that's happening and it's being mm. blown out of proportion. And, you know, I'm not saying coronavirus is fake. I know that there was, there's studies on it and stuff like that. But the fact that they, people believe that it can affect you, that's where I think I'm different because I don't believe these diseases can affect me because Jesus defeated everything that is bad. So there is no um, disease that can actually affect me. You know, I believe this is why I haven't been sick since 2009. Um, where I don't remember, I I can't even remember the last time, like I can obviously remember the mono, but it's like, I don't rem, I don't have the feeling of being bedridden, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, because I don't believe in that stuff no more. I understand that there's these things out there, but they can't affect me even if I eat it. It's like the par- the mm-hmm. scripture that says, like, poison will not affect these people. The ones who 
That's what understand. I meant. That's what yeah. I meant about if people took the vaccine yeah. and they're fine, mm-hmm. they that's because it isn't going to do anything to you unless you believe mm-hmm. it's going to do something and to I, you. And, and people have said, you know, this is the mark of the beast and all that. I don't mm-hmm. believe that because there's nobody that actually said, you take this, this means you're bowing down yeah. to Satan and you refuse Jesus and God and blah, well, I don't blah, think blah. they're going you know, to ma- tell us that? I oh, I bet so. you. I bet you. Because look at what they're doing with the Satanist club and all this. They're trying to put it out there so... It's one of those things, and then it's gonna be like, oh well, Satanists aren't that bad, and you know they're gonna put it out. <laughs> well, I mean, and people I believe I it's gonna, There's people out there joining this. Stuff. I was so just gonna say. This yeah. is why I'm saying people. Mm. It's gonna get to a point where they they have it on MTV. These these rituals they do on stage with music and yeah, all this stuff. This weird. is being promoted yeah. like now a lot. Where they're gonna one day be like, hey, let's all just be with the devil and. And I believe this is going to be that kind of thing. Where that probably is the, coming. Whatever the mark of the beast is, is going to oh be goodness. a way of you are choosing, actually acknowledging um, that you are disregarding Christ yeah. and you're going with the devil. You're yeah. going with Satan. Um, because mm-hmm. people are going to want this worldly stuff. They're going to want to play these video games in virtual reality. They're going to want um, Coke. They're going to want Pepsi. They're going to want all this stuff. Oh, more than they're going to yeah. want. And so they're going to choose this world over paradise with Jesus. I and, think that uh, that's actually coming because yeah. I think that when, like, the systems fall, like, the money's going to end up crashing. And, the and like, we can all see that the stock is, like, messed up and that everybody's talking about different, you know, uh, countries changing from the dollar and all that stuff. So what's going to happen when if if all the banks crash and I don't know, let's just say all the banks crash, the stock exchange crashes and everyone thinks that they've lost like all of the money in the bank, mm-hmm. all of your 401k's, all of your pension, all of the social security checks all and all money. the stuff. Yeah. What are, what are people going to do? What are people going to do? People that believe in Christ know that it doesn't matter because God isn't going to keep it that way. Yeah, we're not, I don't think we're going to have our bank accounts in paradise. Yeah, you know, like and even if we and even if we do have bank accounts, the crashes aren't going to last forever. The crashes are just because God has to get rid of all of the evil that's going on in the world. Like the, there's a whole bunch of evil people using our money and slaving us with all these taxes and stuff. Mm-hmm. People have to see that. And maybe they don't because you hear if right here it says you will hear and keep on hearing but never understand. Yeah. And you will look and keep on looking but never comprehend. God already knows there's people out there that don't want to hear this stuff. Mm-hmm. They don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to even think to themselves, this could possibly be true. Mm-hmm. Like, I could possibly been lied to my whole life. People don't even want to, like, admit to that. For nations' hearts have grown grown hard so he already knows that all the nation's hearts have grown hard and that their ears they hardly hear and that they have tightly closed eyes otherwise they would see or they'd hear or they'd understand with their hearts and then they would turn to me because they know I would heal them so he already knows the people that want to the people that actually are finding Christ. Like, I think this is really one of those, mm, uh, I guess it would be like the fruit, like in when Jesus says the people know my voice, like my, my children know mm-hmm. my voice. First of all, why is Jesus calling us his children? That should show you guys right there that Jesus is not just Jesus. He's, he's not just a guy. Yeah, he's the father. The father calls, he called that lady with the blood my daughter. You've been healed my daughter. Like, why is he calling people 
you know, sons and daughters. Like he's well, calling it because yeah, he's trying to show you guys. Like Everyone he's that's... God, and you know they all but people have don't the wanna... same role. I I do think though that they're different. It's the father isn't the son. The son isn't the father. Yeah, they, but what I'm saying is. If he's calling people well, it's son they're and daughter, all God. they're all the same God. They just have different persons. Right. So I believe they all are um, the same thing. They're all the creator. They're, you know, and stuff like that. So, um, like, I don't, and I think it was like it's somewhere like the, you know, the father and him are one. They're a one God. Um, but I don't think the father is the son and the son is the father, but they are both God. Same with the Holy Spirit. Um, and I, I agree with you, but when Jesus says that he's one with the father as we are one, as he is one with us, mm -hmm. well, he's not me and I'm not him. And Jesus isn't God and God isn't Jesus. So wait, that was... The Father isn't Jesus. But Jesus is God, so you can't say Jesus isn't God, because Jesus is God. Jesus is a is of the God unit. Of the Godhead, yeah. Right, he is, I, I get that. Yeah. But what I'm trying to say is, if he's one with God, mm -hmm. and he came down here as God, like, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. to show us what God looks like, because nobody saw God. Mm -hmm. And so he comes down here as the son, as himself, kind of like that guy said, yeah. you know, but he's also God in heaven, mm -hmm. right, at the same time. But he's showing us. And so for him to say what I was trying to say earlier when he's saying, like, you know, daughter, you've been healed or son, you know, get up and walk. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like for him to say it that way because he didn't always say that he sometimes he just said little girl get up or mm -hmm. you know Lazarus come out he didn't always say daughter or son but what I'm saying is kind of like when he says to the disciples I think like if you've seen me you've seen the father mm -hmm. so I kind of feel like sometimes when he's saying daughter and son he's trying to like talk for his dad mm -hmm. like hey I'm telling you that if God was here, he would do this for yeah. you. This is what he'd say. And so for it to say here in the prophecy, mm -hmm. which doesn't even say who, oh yeah, in Isaiah. So in the prophecy here where it's saying that like they don't, like you have to have, we're, like where it says if they, if they had eyes, they would see. And if they hit ears, they would hear. Like, to me, I kind of take that as if you're not willing to have an open mind and an open heart, you're not going to understand what God's saying in the Bible. You're going to think that he's mean, that he is killing people, that he is, you know, um, going to throw people in, like, a fiery hell for the rest of it. You're going to think all these things because... Kind of what you said a couple videos ago, like you don't put God in a box, but there's a lot of people that think one way of God. Like mm -hmm. this is how God is. We don't, we can't understand him. Why can't we understand him? Of course we can. We're figuring it out. We're, yeah, I think if you're, only, huh? we could never figure out God All, totally. I know, but, yeah. but if you ask, if, to me, I'm not asking like, are you kidding me? There's so many questions that I probably don't even know to ask yet mm -hmm. because I feel like, I was just telling my friend this the other day, I feel like I'm a little bitty speck of sand and and that's as, that's as big as I am with the knowledge that I've gotten in the past eight years yeah. so far with God. So like nothing. Yeah, like I, I feel like it's... We wouldn't like be minuscule. able to. We wouldn't even be able to contain all. I don't the, think so either. It's like putting the ocean in a cup. Yeah. You can't do it. Like yeah. it's just. I really think God actually can't give us all the information. Yeah, because, like an overload. Yeah, we wouldn't mm -hmm. be able to actually still wouldn't be able to like figure stuff out in that way. Like I think we can't contain it. 
Um, and I mm. think that, I believe in the paradise, you know, however God does it, I believe God is going like, to let us know, mm. probably just put it in us, in our being, mm. that we just now know Where they what what yeah. God wants us to know mm. um, about oh. him. I think this stuff that he's showing his character, mm. I believe, through this, but the things God can do, mm. the way God can like literally do whatever he want like this is stuff that's like unfathomable if that's oh yeah you, you because know, it can't... says what that his ways are higher than yeah. ours and that's and why that. i say like the our god mm. his being is of three <laughs> and it's, it's unlike like... anything we can't even it's this is why we stumble sometimes because it's something we can't really we shouldn't Copy be it. able to grasp it in our mind because mm. we don't see this type of stuff in this world yeah and God is out of this world. God isn't like us in yeah. this sense. Um, but, yeah, I believe God was saying, I, I and the Father are one. Like, mm -hmm. I am one with you guys. But mm -hmm. it's I believe it's as one God, three persons, and then Jesus and us would be the body of Christ. So we would be all one, like one family. Um, so we would be one with Jesus, Jesus is one with the Father and the, the Holy Spirit, because this is how, you know, they pretty much explain it, is it's not one God, it is, but it's of three persons, which is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Each of them have um, certain roles, I believe, that they do, but they're all God. They all are the Godhead. So, let's see. So, most of these are about, you know, the different types of ways to understand what he's trying to tell them yeah. here. I feel like the the one that I, I just wanted to say yeah. um, was 31. The one about the mustard seed. It's mm. kind of funny because I didn't realize that a mustard seed actually turns into a tree. Yeah. For, I... When I think mustard seed, I actually had no clue what a mustard seed actually grows. I because it produced like mustard. That's funny. Stuff that's what I that thought. You make mustard with me too. I thought it was like maybe something that you'd have to ground. Yeah, and to it make would be yeah, yeah. But I don't think it does because it make. I kind of want to know. <laughs> yeah. I kind of want to know now. So hold on. I want to see what a mustard seed mustard. Seed tree. I want to see what it looks like. Oh, oh wow. wow, that's that is huge. What? That's not what I thought a mustard tree looked like. Holy cow! Wow, look, look at, at the size, the of, size it. of it. This is what I'm talking about. Are you kidding me? Like if we have faith that size. This, this is so small. <laughs> This is a pretty tree, too. Yeah. Wow. Like, look at this one. What does the mustard Jeez. seed produce? Oh, let me see. I think it produces this tree. Yeah, but let I feel see. like it must... I mean, I could be wrong, but I feel like it must have something on it that we can... Let's see. Um, I look, think it's just mustards. Look mustard at, seeds. Look at the all instead of oh, images. Okay, let me see. So, um, mustard seeds are a rich source of oil and protein. The seed has oil okay. as high as 46.8%, and the whole seed meal has 43.6 protein. Hey, why aren't we using... Wait a minute. Why don't we use mustard seed to make bread, then? If it's a, it can turn into a meal, because like, isn't um, I'm not sure. Isn't seed meal? Let me see. Meal is good for what? <laughs> oh, maybe right. mustard meal. Mustard is good for you. Wait, I think it is. Does make oh. Trevor, hold on. Mustard is good for you because it contains several antioxidants that provide various health benefits, including anti-cancer, antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal, 
anti-inflammatory and wound healing properties. One mustard is a low calorie, oh wait, one. Mustard is a low calorie, highly flavored condiment that can replace and augment most calorie dense options. Huh. Mm. So it is, it is how they make mustard. Okay. <laughs> I didn't even know, I didn't know there were seeds in the mustard. Well, I assume there'd be something like that, but huh. I never really think about it. Me neither. That was interesting. So that was, I thought, really cool because it's saying, you know, that the mustard seed grows into a tree and then that gives the birds <laughs> yeah, somewhere this to is live, why, which is kind of cool. What I believe this is really trying to get to the root to is that whatever God does is for multiple reasons. Yeah. A tree being planted isn't just for shade. You know, it's for animals, it's yeah. for insects, um, birds, you know, birds, yeah. mm -hmm. it's for squirrels. Um, it's to produce fruit. Produce for fruit us. for us. Yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Like, God, whatever God does, it isn't just for, like, one thing. It's for, a, like they say, like, stuff that we might not be able to eat, but a certain animal can eat. Maybe that animal produces a gas Something. that, you know, like, like... We don't eat grass, but cows eat grass, yeah. and then cows fart a, a, a substance that the trees need, mm -hmm. and then the trees give us the the source that mm -hmm. we need. It's like yeah, it's every, a cycle. everything God did is for like multiple things. Um, so that's what I think mm -hmm. he was saying is heaven mm -hmm. is something God made that is for everybody. Yeah. It's he literally thought of everybody. Um, that is going to be in paradise because uh, Jesus is pre Jesus is preparing us the new Jerusalem. Yeah. That's what for the bride for us we're supposed to get ready for him to come back. Right now he is making a feast and he is making the new Jerusalem um, for us mm -hmm. when he comes back. The other thing that I thought was interesting is this parable. That was spoken by the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things unknown and unattainable to that have been hidden from mankind since the foundation of the world. Yeah. And I was like, ah, oh. so they didn't know, which makes sense because they say that in the Old Testament, they didn't really understand God, like didn't understand God. And so Jesus came to also help them understand mm -hmm. what God had been trying to like explain to them throughout all that time with Moses and all that. And yeah. it's, and it's funny cause I think that's why he says I came to fulfill those. I didn't come to like ruin them. Mm -hmm. I came to fulfill them, yeah. fulfill the laws and stuff. Yeah, We got to think, you know, mm -hmm. um, those laws mm -hmm. are the things that we would just, automatically do following Jesus. Like, right. we wouldn't steal. We wouldn't lie. Like, these things are, like, a given now. Like, yeah. it's almost like, why would I do that? Right, you know, right. I don't need to be commanded no more because now I just, like, I don't, don't want to lie. Desire. I don't, don't want to yeah. lie. I don't want to steal from this person. They, yeah. they, they got that. I don't have it, so yeah. I don't want to take it from them. I don't want to envy somebody. Mm -hmm. I don't want to put somebody above God. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is what I was saying earlier, is we're, we're a species that are bred to or created in a way of we worship mm. and if we don't worship God we're gonna worship Something. stuff on the world yeah. like money women drugs gambling um, you know mm. all these things we will we will worship these things it's just gonna happen this is why God wants us to worship him who better to worship than our Lord mm. you know the one that created us the yeah. one that knows us inside and out and truly loves us yeah and i've said this before and i said it you know i had written um you know god loves us unlike humans who say it but don't really mean it mm -hmm. god means it god can't lie yeah and he says that he loves the world he loved us so much that he gave his begotten son his one and only begotten son to us for us so we could have salvation because we kept sinning we could not get over sin. So God loved us so much and so did Jesus that um, that he wanted to come down and give us this and take all the debt from us, meaning our sins, the stuff we had to pay at the end in judgment. 
if you believe in Christ, that is our path into paradise mm-hmm. um, because we could not get over sin. Even think about it now, there's so many people that you know understand Christ but still fall into sin. It's falling short of the glory of God. Mm-hmm. You know, Doing the wrong thing is falling short of the glory of God because God wants us to be like Jesus. That was the whole point, um, to understand what Jesus did, believe in him, and then try to act at, not like act pretend, but to like, once you feel what Jesus did in your soul, you will want to do that. You will want to be helpful to people because you will just have a amazing feeling and, uh, a relaxing feeling. Yeah, of love. Yeah, where it's like, like it's I'm an content abundance. because yeah. there's nothing that's going to happen to me because I understand Jesus is protecting me. Mm. You know, um, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they're protecting all of us, not just me. Um, but it's, you know, you have to believe in God as what God is, mm. and God is Jesus, God is the Father, God is the Holy Spirit, and you just have to understand um to worship, you know, to worship God is to worship someone, you know, who's truly wants the absolute best. Like, the way he's preparing paradise for us, the stuff he's putting in it, like gold rivers and all these gems and all this, like, he he wants to, like, really give us all these gifts. And we're the ones not accepting it because we're accepting this world before we're accepting God. Um, Mm, It kind of reminds me of, like, again, of that picture where Jesus has got the bigger teddy bear behind. Because everyone is so... We're all, like, conditioned to get everything right now. Like, nobody wants to wait. Nobody, you know, everyone's impatient. Everybody is, like... It's for me. I don't care about anybody else. Mm -hmm. And just like, yeah, there's definitely not the kind. It's kind of funny because we're, hold on, because that just reminded me of, um, God already knew this stuff was going to (laughs) happen. This is so crazy. I think it's, I think it's here. What? Can, what? Kim, what the... Is that a high school Timothy? It looks like Timothy. Right. <laughs> three. I'm pretty sure it's three. Oh, is it second Timothy? Hold on, not first Timothy. It's either first Timothy or second Timothy. Oh, let's see. Nope, second Timothy. Oh my goodness. Oh, yeah, right here. Right here. Like, it literally says right here. But understand this, that in the last days, dangerous times of great stress and trouble will come. Difficult days that will be hard to bear. For people will be lovers of self, narcissistic, self-focused, lovers of money, impelled by greed, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, we see that Mm -hmm. ungrateful unholy and profane and they will be unloving devout of any natural human affection callous and inhumane irreconcilable well i mean geez we see that all over the news Mm -hmm. where people you can't even talk to somebody now if they're pissed off and you go against what they believe forget it they're malicious gossips devoid of self-control they have in temperament, in morality, brutal, haters of good, traitors, reckless, conceited, lovers of sensual pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to a form of outward godliness, religion, although they have denied its power. Boy, that mm. sounds like the church. And avoid such people. Like, he's telling us to avoid such people and keep far away from them. For among them are those who worm their way into homes and captivate... Oh, no, and cap... Yeah, and captivate morality... No, captivate morally weak and spiritually dwarfed women weighted down by the burdens of their sins, easily swayed by various impulses... 
always learning and listening to anybody who will teach them, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Wow, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. That's totally what's happening today. Like, we can all see that. There's there's absolutely no this is, justification. You know, this is a good reason why you should go to the Bible, because... Yeah. God won't lie to you. Mm -hmm. People will, you know, and we need to go to what God wants us to read before we go to people. This is why, you know, I don't really, in a nice way, pay attention to humans in that sense. Like, mm -hmm. people will tell me something, and, you know, if for some reason it's something that stays in my mind, I want to go to God with it, because if it's not for me, I don't want it in there. Um, but most of the stuff that I hear, it's just in in one ear and out the other because I don't want to be tainted by this world and people's beliefs. They want you to believe what they believe. Mm -hmm. You know, it, as soon as I say I have been six in 2009, people want you to now believe what they believe. They're not going to want to believe what you believe. They're going to be like, no, 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 you'll get sick again, watch, or, yeah. you know, oh, you know, I'll cough on you or whatever they're mm -hmm. going to do. They don't want to believe that. And, um. And in my sense, I'm not trying to force people, but people who are believing the wrong thing usually want to force you to believe it. Yeah, um, that's so true. And then there was something where it had said, like, when I first realized, you know, okay, this is God, um, in every conversation I was in, I would just bring it to God and I would talk and talk and talk. I wouldn't let the other person talk. I just kept bombarding them with God. And I started to realize, like, I'm like, really pushing people away from God. And I had seen something, and it said, like, you know, if a parent s tells their kid to um, eat the vegetables, and it's, you know, they're saying no, you know, the parent shouldn't force the, the whatever Vegetable. vegetables down there. No matter how good the vegetables are, it's not good to force mm -hmm. the vegetables down somebody's throat. Um, and then it's almost like how people will memorize the scripture... Because there was another thing I had heard where um, they said, you know, if, if I tell my daughter to clean her room and she comes back and I go, look, and it's not clean. And I go, hey, go clean your room. I just told her to clean your room. And, you know, it goes back and forth and she just keeps not cleaning it up. And then she goes, well, I remembered what you said. He's like, but I don't want you to just remember what I said. I told you to clean your room. I want you to clean your room. And that's where... The word, you know, I believe that scripture where people yep, will, he said they'll that. hear it and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. some people will boast. Some people will mm -hmm. um, try to get people to envy them, like act like they have hidden knowledge, act like they're better than people. Um, but God wants us to not just memorize this word so we can just regurgitate it. He wants it to go into our hearts and in our beings and, and our spirit we and, and then we actually yeah. act it out yeah. like we actually use the action of what god gave us the directions of um and that's what it is is he, god doesn't want us to come back and be like well i memorized the bible he's like well did you live it you know remember like did the, you actually do what it said that's the point remember the other day when me and you were talking and i said i feel like we're like living out the scriptures yeah that's a hundred percent what I think you just meant because I went from trying to memorize like that's what I thought the Jehovah Witnesses were trying to like teach me mm -hmm. memorize a lot of these scriptures because if somebody asks you you know you can give them certain scriptures mm -hmm. but really it wasn't until I started to realize wait God says, though, that I don't need to, like, worry about what I'm going to say yeah. when I need, when he needs me to say something. Right. So it isn't really on my terms mm -hmm. when per, when people should be told something, kind of what you were saying. Like, I did the same thing when I first started to mm -hmm. realize about God. I was kind of bombarding people with God, yeah. you know, and because I thought that. Well, I was excited, mm -hmm. and I wanted people to know what I was learning, yeah. and I thought that they would want to learn it, and yeah. because I wanted to learn it, and so that was my mistake, and God had to show me, too, to, like, relax, yeah. because you are pushing people away, and yeah. so, to me, now that I can see that 
certain people, you know, in my life are actually playing out. I feel like we're playing like the play, mm -hmm. the Bible. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we're in the play, the Bible, and we're literally like the the actors that are like <laughs> you know yeah. on stage um, trying to perform for our father yeah. like he's watching the show and he wrote the script mm -hmm. and he's like super excited because we're all on stage yeah. and he knows that some of us might throw up yeah. you know because we're nervous and some of us might trip or whatever but he he's a he doesn't care because he's like excited yeah. you know to see all of us acting out mm -hmm. what he's teaching us kind of right. what you said yeah like that's like a script kind of like he's like hey listen i already know how you're gonna think mm -hmm. and all that because i kind of made you that way so if you read my word it'll show you how to live and then just live it you don't mm -hmm. have to read yeah i think it's I more or less like um god didn't make us in a way where we're gonna sin we were tainted. Hmm. Um, God made us. Mm -hmm. That's that's what it is. Is God already gave us the miracle of having a body, having an existence, um, you know, having all of our limbs and our organs and stuff like that. Once we come out into this world, we're coming out into what God gave us is this free will, and but it's all filled with sin. So we come out fresh from God, and then now we're in this world and we become tainted. Um, I had seen something like God sees things from a different perspective because he's higher than us, like literally and figuratively, like he's like much higher than us. And it's like somebody, if I were to see two ants and I can see them walking towards some impending danger, um, I might know that ahead of time, like God can see everything he sees. Okay. I can see that they're going to go into there. You know, maybe he does stuff like he puts a, you know, I, I might put a stick in their way, you know. But then people might be like, oh, there's this thing. Know, let's go over it. Like not knowing God is protecting you mm -hmm. from all this stuff. But God isn't going to pick us up and move us because then that's not our free will. You know, he wants us to do the right thing. But we have these, you know, uh, a free will in which we can choose Um but, you know, like I have said before, we are tainted because of Adam and Eve. So what we, this is why I said, you know, he said, I forget how he said it, but it's the way of once you understand who Jesus is and what God is and, and all this stuff, once you realize the free will you have, you immediately want to give it to God. Mm -hmm. You don't want it. It's something so precious, but it's like, um, you know, the best thing to do is to give it back to God. Because God is going to have the best intentions for us, you know. It's like a child knows their parents is going to treat them well. And they, you know, there's fun times when you're with your parents. So it's like, that's what you want. You want your parents to say, hey, let's go into the car. Let's go for a drive. And then you end up somewhere really cool. You know, it's you're, you're just giving God the authority in your life you don't want the authority no more you give it to god you give it to jesus who's god you know like um but yeah i think we should pretty much wrap this one up mm -hmm. i don't think we did anything else well he also says down here like he's sad because you know he's trying to tell the people in his hometown yeah um, and, and like he said, you know, people in your hometown, the ones closest to you is mm -hmm. what I get out of this. The yeah. ones closest to you are, and I just was talking to my friend yesterday about this, like to put up boundaries with people, you know, healthy boundaries and you've never had boundaries. It's going to be harder to you to keep the boundaries with the people that know you than it is with people that are new because the people that know you they know that you used to give in and all mm -hmm. that stuff so they they're like yeah they we don't think you're gonna do it kind of and so they will kind of push your boundaries mm -hmm. because they know they can get away with it and i think that that it to me this reminds me of that where he's like 
they, I'm not doing any miracles here mm -hmm. because they don't even want to believe that I possibly could be the Christ. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like they, they were like, what? He's just like the guy down and the you, street. And you could put this son. in modern terms where it's like, what? This guy found Jesus. I mean, this guy's tatted up. This yeah. guy used to do heroin. This guy killed somebody. What? He found Jesus? Yeah, right. Like, yeah. They, you know, it's people who, you know, can cast these judgments mm. that are next to you, that know you. Like, they were saying, like, mm. isn't his mom Mary? Mm -hmm. Like, isn't these his brothers? How does he have this power and knowledge right. and, you know, authority? And where does he get this authority, you mm -hmm. know? Um, and again, we're not Jesus, but people, when you follow Jesus, it's the people who are closest to you that have seen your life. And if you've had a life of doing wrong, which all of us have, um, they're not going to, this is, you know, why I had to leave all my friends, which was really hard because I knew they're not going to allow me to change in front of them. Mm -hmm. I have to go away and I have to be with God and alone um, which when you read some scriptures where it's saying to go and be away from these people, go to the Lord, um, it just reminds me of that. And this is why I say, you know, things that have happened in my life, I can read it in the Bible and I know God had a hand in it because God's speaking on it. I'm not saying I'm these people, but I'm saying God did this mm -hmm. to me so God could share his wisdom with me. In which I believe I have a discernment when I hear things. And it's not like, it's it's not um, a thought process. It's just immediate. And it's never like um, a harsh judgment. It's just like, oh, this is it. It's like seeing something that's green. This is green. Mm -hmm. I don't hate this thing because it's green. I don't, you know, <laughs> nothing about it I hate. I just noticed, oh, this is green. Mm -hmm. So when people are gossiping, like, okay, these people are gossiping. I don't want to gossip. I want to walk away mm -hmm. or I want to go do something else mm -hmm. um, where you're not casting judgment on people because we all were these people. Exactly. We all were not just deceived, but we were deceiving others. Yep. We were deceiving ourselves. Uh, we're deceiving, you know, every nook and cranny of our lives. And this is the thing that sucks is we built our lives on these lies where once you, when I, you know, it did happen with, um, you know, drugs, but uh, when I had my ego death, um, it really kind of took me away from me. Like, I was so self-centered, and then I was immediately like, I only care about people around me now. Like, I, I knew I love myself, but it was like, now I just want to make people around me happy. Like, I don't want to just focus on myself. Um, I want to actually help people, leave people better then I found them, um, which is something that I fell in love with. I like making people happy. I like people having it in their mind, like, this is a good person. Like, that makes me happy. Um, you know, when I do a good job, I like hearing that, you know, when I work, you know, customers tell me on how good a job I did, how how amazingly I um, explained everything thoroughly, you know, all this stuff, this makes me happy because I am doing integrity um, where I could screw people over. I could do um, a half job, but I don't want to do that. I want to do my absolute best to treat people's stuff as if it was my stuff. Treat people's persons as if they were me. I want to love others, like it says, as myself. I love... Um, I love to love like Jesus loved. Jesus truly loved people. And, you know, when I see acts of, you know, like how I said in another video, if somebody took the bullets to shield their daughter, like these things move me. Like it's like, whoa, you know, like I just love love, which is God. God is love. I love God. I love what God is, which is love. You know, it's just like, um... Yeah, this world's perfect. I feel like I just went on a little tangent, but um, yeah, I think this one's pretty mm -hmm. good. All right, so we're going to end with a prayer. So, Father God, in the precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we come before you humbly, praising you, thanking you, Father, for all the things that you've done for us our whole lives, since birth, even before birth, you knew us from 
before we were in the womb. You created us and man, just knowing that you know how many hairs are on our head, which is kind of funny because my hair falls out all the time. So that makes me always kind of giggle. And you probably already know that, which then is also mind blowing to me. Just the fact that you tell us that you know the names of the stars and you know how many are in heaven and it's it's an abundance of love that you have for all of the world all the creation that you made everything and everyone in it and you know it is true when you realize that you know god isn't that far away from us like i know that they want us all to believe that he is you know far away but he's he's not he's he's so close to us he can he lives inside of us and just the fact that that thought of him living inside of me you know helping me out on a daily basis every time that I want to turn to someone you know I don't have to worry that he doesn't want to hear me um I can go to him freely and he's always there to listen and father that's just like so amazing to me that you can do that for everyone everywhere around the whole world at the same time like it can be at the same time which is so amazing and I agree that loving a, a creator that is beyond what we can imagine to me is amazing like and it isn't for anything that you can give me it's for the fact that you've created the sun and the moon and the stars and the earth and the seas and everything all the animals and the trees and everyone around the world it's it's precious it shows us how much you love us and we just really, really appreciate it and we're so grateful that we have the ears and the eyes to hear and see and the desire to search and knock and to hear you talking to us and wanting to know more. Um, and I pray that everybody that doesn't know you will feel the pull on their hearts today they will hear these words and they will feel you your holy spirit pulling on them because only you father pulls us towards you you're the one that knows our intentions our hearts our minds what we're thinking if we can change or not you're the only one that knows that and jesus tells us that without you pulling us to you we wouldn't go and without him we can't get there. So thank you, Father, for all of the great, wonderful things that you've done for everyone in the world. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.